We've had our January weather in November and December, and now we're getting a little bit of our March weather at the end of December. Now we'll see if we get our January weather anyway, <laughs> which we may, but. So I ran some errands this morning. Now, this afternoon, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going with this stove pipe. Get these component pieces on the stove installed, make sure it's all set. We went back and forth about which way we were gonna go with this pipe and where we were gonna orient the stove. This is initially how I wanted it to sit. I wasn't sure I'd be able to get it in the right position to get the stove pipe to come up and interact with the trusses the right way and, and the fire distances, fire rating distances and everything. But we plan on putting a fire surround on this. We've got some really cool ideas in there, kind of some artsy, creative ideas that we're going to do with that. Got it positioned. I've got it leveled. Um, now I'm just going to go ahead and get these component pieces bolted on. So everything's good to go here. Stack the pipe. I don't know if I'll be able to get up on the roof today to get the flashing in. It's starting to be pretty sunny this afternoon, which wasn't necessarily expected. So I'm hoping that any snow that was there is cleared and that it's dried up enough that I can be able to get up there. I'm hoping I can get that done in the next day or two so that I can get this through its first fire. Every time you get a new stove, a new pipe and all that, you got to go through a couple of initiating burns. That helps cure the paint, burn off any oil residues. It's got a full cure, but once you get it to a full temperature, that's when that paint fully cures off. I'd like to do that before I get the ceiling buttoned up so that any of that vapor and any of the scent and stink from that has a lot easier access getting the heck out of the building here and evacuating out. And then I can get moving back onto insulating the ceiling. As long as I get that ceiling insulated, that's gonna create the heat trap for the ceiling layer. Even though all that heat would work through the insulation and probably within a couple of hours would be cooled back down again, the fact that I could hold temperature in here for a couple of hours is a huge uptake in order to get started on warming the building, drying things out, making sure everything's good as we start putting the board and acclimating temperatures. Let's keep going with this. Okay, that's all installed to there. And now I'm ready to cut the hole in, put the flashing in, drop the next two tubes in and the rain cap. But I forgot to put in my pipe damper. It needs to go right here. So now I gotta figure out, and I don't wanna to take that whole stack apart, but I'm hoping these screws out, I can probably put a strap around that top pipe and maybe try to ratchet it up into place to just lift everything. I only need to lift it that inch and a half or so to get the flange out of here so that I can slide it over, have my two holes drilled through, put my damper back in and then set it back into place. Dang it. Got in a hurry, got excited, got in a hurry. Okay, so I've gotten that all back together. So everything's good to hear. I'm just under three feet to come through the roof. I'm like 30 inches to get through the roof. Um, my insulated pipe sections are 36 inches. So the very next section will come through the roof with about three or four inches, which means it will be inside the flange of the uh, roof flashing flange. So what I will need to do next is Cut the hole in the roof, 
drop one more section through and lock it into place. I can go up on the roof with the flange, set the flange down, drop the other pipe on, knock it into place, and then be able to install the flange. Uh, there's about four inches from the from the cone shape of the flange, about four inches perimeter all the way around. Now the flange is gonna be right at the peak, the very top of the peak. So because of that, it'll actually crest over the top of the ridge cap. So I'll have a full overlap on both sides. Let me get the piece and I can show you. And this will sit up there on the ring. And this part here will be the uphill end. And it'll sit, it'll sit in there like that at my 412 pitch. And the peak, the very peak of the roof will be right about here. So I'll fold this down over the peak. And that'll create watershed this direction and this direction. And I won't have any opportunity for the water to pool up and dam underneath or dam up in front of it but I will use the butyl tape all the way around this perimeter as I screw it down on in place. And then on this downhill edge, the manufacturer of the steel roofing makes a, what they call a foam closure strip. Um, it's a high density foam with a little bit of an adhesive. So it matches the profile of the roof across the top of it. And then this, uh, this flashing, will come down on top of that. That seals that, it also seals it for bugs so they can't come up in underneath, that kind of thing. So that'll seal everything on the downhill side, the butyl tape will seal the sides and the top, and everything will be tight. And then I have the storm collar that goes over this part of the flashing to tighten that up, and we should be in good shape. We've had a little bit of sunlight kind of in and out throughout this afternoon, a little bit overcast, and good weather uh, but as I went out to check it out there's still a layer of snow across the entire roof so what I'm gonna do I brought up my little torpedo heater it's a propane fired one and it uses a, a cordless tool battery to run the fan and the ignition and I'm gonna just blast a bunch of heat into this kind of end of the roof, but that should make all of that snow slough off and come scooting off of there and give it time to start drying out. Once I got that all connected and warming up, I decided to take a few minutes to run the last bit of in-wall wiring that we had planned. After a little bit of discussion, we had decided that we would close in a room underneath the stairs where we would house the air compressor as well as shelving and things for inventory items like bolts and nuts and filters and I'll likely keep my chargers for my cordless tools in there as well. So I'm pulling in a separate circuit for the air compressor as well as a main circuit for the power and lighting in that small room. Well the snow's still on the roof. But man, what an incredible view out here tonight. Ultimately, it was two days later before I was able to get up on the roof and cut in the hole. Doesn't matter how many times I look at this sky, even though it's the same viewpoint and the same scenery, that sky is never the same twice. That never gets old walking out of that shop and seeing that kind of a view. Now that I've been messing around with that snowblower for a while, I'm going to stop and take a minute go cut a hole in the roof up there and get that pipe dropped in the hole all right so i made it up here that's my screw that i screwed up from the underside to mark my center point and i just took this door shim that had a hole in it marked that for and uh, mark this at five inches that'll give me a 10 inch hole for an eight inch pipe. So that'll give me the clearances I need. And uh, so I'm just gonna try to do this and record at the same time.
Okay, well, anyway, you get the idea. So now I'll punch a hole with the drill and then I'll cut that out real quick. Okay, the hole cut right on top of our pipe. I'll go in and put the next one up through the bottom because it'll come up to about here. And then I'll come up here with the flashing and the other piece of pipe and tape and sealer and get this sealed up. <laughs> yeah. Nine Nine Okay, it is done, we're going down. Ow. Oh. Well, I washed the floor by hand. And it always reminds me of when I was like back in Lithuania and my mom, she washed the floor by hand and you walked on it like you were, you had like a death sentence. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. so I washed the floor and then I'm like, I'm going to go bring, 
I'm gonna go bring some firewood and let the floor dry before I was feeling my own guilt. <laughs> You're feeling your own death sentence coming. Yeah. <laughs> I walk on it. Will that even fit? Let me try to. Well, yeah, it'll fit. Cool. <laughs> Well, what do you think of the snowblower? It's pretty awesome. You're gonna... So if, the, if the, the temperatures were colder, would it work better? If the snow was less wet, yeah. Are you pretty excited? Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Is there anything to like Where's this? your jacket? I don't have a lighter. Even nicer. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> that was pretty clever. <laughs> There's parts in there. There's parts in there. <laughs> <laughs> that's fun. That be nice big fireplace, that's for sure. It's big, yeah. It's beautiful. It looks great in here. <clears throat> oh, yeah. She's warming up. Yeah, when I was mopping the floor, I was thinking, I never grew up around a string mop or the, you know, the, the, the plug-in steam mop, none of that. I never grew up with any of it. And we had a strict rule on don't wear your shoes in the house. You know, it's a very European thing. And, and now, I'm glad, I mean, I'm glad I have the, the amount of floors that I have, but even when we lived in our big house, like the amount of floors that you wash and somebody walks on it before it dries, you do kind of want to go, my back hurts, my knees hurt, how dare you walk across the floor? Yeah, if you come down and look, you can see the, the air that's coming in from the tubes and it looks like it's flames coming in from the tubes, but it's just introducing fresh air. And so it hits the smoke that with that fresh air and ignites. That's why it's a clean burn stove. Oh. Low emissions. Is that reintroduction of fresh air burns off that smoke? I've got it choked down like all the way right now. So the air intake is choked off and the damper up there is choked off. Just to, because we had a pretty good fire started now, so I wanted to see how it would react. That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's really, really thoughtful. You open that up and then you see the change in it. Because now it's drawing air from the intake instead of from those tubes. That's really neat. And it's off gassing really well, curing the paint. Yeah, it looks like up there on the pipe too, like it's. Yep. So while that's open, that'll be nice. Let it ventilate. So this is when winter technically starts. Yeah. And here we are, we've been in it already for a couple of months. Didn't you clear all this snow yesterday, the day before? Yeah. You gotta do it all over again, like tomorrow. Yeah. I you gotta I'm get the garage door open so you can get your snowblower in there. Right? Oh, look at all that snow. I think I'm good to give it, to let it build up to six inches or so before I mess with it again. <laughs> I'm tired of doing it for three hours every day for two or three inches. I'm like ready to say, no, let's just uh, get by for a day or two without, let it pile up a minute. And yeah. 
do some actual work today. It's pretty. I'm just already tired of it. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready for spring. Well, get ready for January. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So you'd say the paint's already cured on it and everything? Yeah, we've had two fires on it now. Okay. The first one flashed off most everything. Yesterday when we had a fire, I didn't really smell any paint coming anywhere, so. That's good. So it should be all cured up and in good shape now. Okay. Now we're just so, gonna tap the ceiling. Yeah. Oh, it's already like warming up. Is it? I don't know, I just saw it. Yeah? It's warm. Okay, good. Well, let's let that burn for a little bit. And okay. We can go and take care of the animals. Okay. We have a bunch of random mugs at our house. And this one, Ola bought for me a couple of years ago. And then this one, my dad got for Ola for Christmas a couple of years ago. There's a lot that says there, but it says, to my dear daughter-in-law, I don't give you the gift of life. Oh, I didn't give you the gift of life. I gave you my amazing son. Thank you for not selling him to the circus. I know how tempting that option is some days. Love your father-in-law. Pretty cute. <laughs> It's really cozy standing over here by the fire. I know, we gotta, but makes, we gotta get a move on. Makes you wanna just stand here and talk about things and not do any actual work. <laughs> yeah, spill your tea. Or spill your tea. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. Spill the tea. <laughs> Silly. Okay, inspirational quote from my tea bag. <laughs> oh, yeah. One thorn of experience is worth a whole wilderness of warning. Yeah, that's pretty insightful. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think. Well, let's stop uh, getting all this heat off the roof and let's cap the <laughs> roof. <laughs> yeah, let's work down this side. Yeah. We'll finish that side. Okay. Because we have so much junk in the way over here. For a minute we can work down this side just like we were doing at first so probably if you want to just feed me bats and the foam and i'll do the sapling and getting that going and in between handing me that stuff if you want to tidy up some things over there that we can make room for the ladders yeah on that side the tea but the tea time next to the fireplace i'm just finishing that tea. me too
As we finished in this section of the ceiling, we could immediately start feeling the heat trapping in up against it. It wasn't extremely hot, but it was enough that you could feel the difference. It's really nice to feel the immediate difference that that bit of insulation makes. And it makes me really excited to keep going and try to get the rest of this ceiling finished in so that we can get moving on to drywall.